a man named Abdul in a sub-Saharan region of Africa dumped his wife and two daughters just because of their blue-colored eyes. Then something unimaginable happened. The very moment that the nurses gladly handed Risikat's newborn baby girl to her, the young mother took one quick glance at her, and tears of sorrow welled up in her eyes. Oh my god, not another blue-eyed baby! Risikat screamed on top of her voice. The nurses immediately took away the baby from the clearly distressed Risikat. Then the medics just stood around, staring at Risikat in sheer bewilderment. They just couldn't fathom why her baby's blue eyes were causing her so much distress. To them, dark-skinned babies with such eye colors were a rarity in that part of the world. Hence, they should be cherished as unique beauties. But Risikat's illiterate husband, Abdul, didn't share the medic's viewpoints a bit. And that was the precise reason for her distress. In fact, to Abdul, and to most of his kinsmen, blue-eyed babies are seen as some sort of bad omen or worse, demons. Barely an hour later, Abdul arrived at the hospital. With his arms crossed around his back, the tall, lanky Abdul slowly and most casually made his way to the labor room to see his newborn baby. Upon entering the room, Abdul completely ignored the clearly tired and scared-looking Risikat like she wasn't even there and glanced around the room. Then he saw the newborn baby girl still being cleaned up and cuddled by a nurse. Abdul's fixation was not really on the baby or the nurse cuddling her, but just on her eyes. Just a quick glance into the baby's eyes and that was enough for him. Abdul suddenly turned away. He hurried out of the room without even saying a single word, either to his wife or to the puzzled medics. That was the last time Risikat set her eyes on her husband for a very long time. As when she returned home some days later, Abdul was nowhere to be found. Worse off, all his stuff was missing too. He had literally disappeared into thin air. Risikat's worst fears were confirmed. Abdul had dumped her and her two kids, just like he had threatened to. If she ever gave birth to any blue-eyed devil again, Risikat herself was born with a pair of striking blue eyes, a deviation from the norm in that part of the world. Her astonished parents had feared that their daughter suffered an eye defect, so they had promptly consulted a doctor. According to the doctor, a baby of African descent being born with blue eyes usually results from a genetic variation, most specifically a mutation affecting the OCA2 and HERC2 genes, which can lead to reduced melanin in the iris. Risikat's parents paid little or no attention to the doctor's medical lectures, until he conclusively confirmed that Risikat was in a perfect health condition despite her unique eye color. That was a huge relief to the couple. As Risikat grew, she received a lot of attention, both positive and negative, from people that came in contact with her. Some praised her for her unique beauty, while others called her a witch. Risikat had met Abdul when she was 18 and he was 23. They had met in the marketplace and it had been love at first sight for the duo. Just a few months after they began dating, the lovebirds decided to tie the knot together. Hence, the family introductions began in earnest. When Risikat brought Abdul home to meet her parents, the couple wholeheartedly accepted him as their future son-in-law. But all hell broke loose when Abdul took Risikat home to his mother. His father had died a few years back. Abdul's mom, named Barakat, took one look at Risikat's blue eyes and almost ran away in utter shock. Then she started screaming on top of her lungs that her beloved son was under a love spell. Barakat bluntly accused Risikat of witchcraft. It took the intervention of some neighbors to calm Barakat down a bit after she ordered Risikat out of their home. Outside the house, Risikat struggled to contain her tears. She could still hear the bitter arguments that went on between Abdul and his mother, and her heart ached even more. Finally, after what seemed like ages, a visibly angry Abdul came out of the house and saw Risikat home to her parents' house. As the days dragged on, Barakat tried everything within her power to tear the two lovebirds apart, but their love stood the test of time. Abdul even threatened to disown his mom if she didn't accept Risikat as her daughter-in-law. Being fully aware that her son was not joking around with the threat, Barakat eventually but most reluctantly gave in to Abdul's demands. Shortly after, Risikat and Abdul got married. A year later, Risikat gave birth to her first daughter, Aisha, who took after her mom's blue eyes. Meanwhile, Barakat had never relented in her efforts to build a wall between her son and Risikat. She even paid some of Abdul's elderly kinsmen, who all sided with her in piling pressures on Abdul to do away with Risikat, whom they all labeled a witch. Gradually but surely, Abdul was beginning to crack under the intense pressure. Barakat and the elders even warned him beforehand that Risikat giving birth to a blue-eyed baby would be a validation to all the claims they were making against her. Hence, once Risikat gave birth to her first blue-eyed colored baby, Abdul remembered his mom and kinsman's warnings. 
and became fully convinced about their claims against Rissicat. Things quickly started falling apart for the once happy family couple as soon as Rissicat came back home with her baby. Abdul literally changed overnight and started acting cold towards Rissicat. He would always shout at her at the slightest provocation. Worse off, Abdul basically refused to have anything to do with our new baby girl. He hardly even touched her. Rissicat was quite saddened at the new turn of events. This was not the man she had fallen in love with. Rissicat would always think to herself. This version of Abdul scared her. When Rissicat confronted Abdul about his sudden coldness towards her and their baby, he screamed at her. Why does our baby have blue eyes? Rissicat was stunned beyond words and was still staring at Abdul with her mouth agape when he continued. Can't you see that what my mom and kinsmen have been saying about you for so long is true? You are indeed demonically possessed, and now you have just succeeded in passing those demons of yours onto our baby. Abdul barked at Rissikat before he stormed out of the room, leaving Rissikat looking like someone who had just seen a ghost. Rissikat was surely saddened that she had lost the only man she ever truly loved to some outdated superstitions and beliefs, but she vowed to persevere just for the sake of her beloved baby girl. Soon, Rissicat became pregnant again, and this time she prayed and hoped that the baby would have black eyes, just to prove all our superstitious naysayers wrong for good. A black-eyed baby would surely bring back Abdul, the love of her life, Rissicat thought to herself. But how wrong Rissicat was. Her second baby turned out to be another blue-eyed once again. Abdul only visited Rissicat once in the hospital after she gave birth to her second daughter. His mission wasn't even to see his wife or baby, but to just see the baby's eyes. Once he had completed his mission, Abdul hurriedly left the hospital without even saying a single word to his wife. Rissicat waited for Abdul for almost five days to come and offset the hospital bills, so she would be discharged and return home with her newborn baby. But as the days passed by, it increasingly became obvious to Rissicat that Abdul wasn't planning on returning back to the hospital for her and the baby. So she decided to send out desperate calls of help to her family members to come to her aid. Rissicat's relatives heeded to her call. They rallied around her and footed her hospital bills, and Rissicat and her baby were finally discharged from the hospital. On getting home, Rissicat found the place as silent as a graveyard. There was no sign of Abdul. He had made good on his threats to abandon her and her blue-eyed little demons. To say that Rissicat was devastated that Abdul's sudden disappearance would be an understatement. She felt like dying. Rissicat had really loved Abdul. He was her first and only love. Rissicat had basically given Abdul everything only for him to dump her like hot coals when she needed him the most. Rissicat would always wonder how her blue eyes, which Abdul so much cherished when they first met, later turned out to be the very reason he dumped her and the kids for. What an irony. Rissicat would also remind herself that it was all the pressures that Barakat and the other kinsmen piled upon Abdul that eventually turned his heart away from her. Still, if he truly loved her like he once claimed to do, then Abdul should have resisted all those pressures, Rissicat would also tell herself. Deep in such thoughts, she would always cry herself to sleep for the first few weeks after Abdul's departure. But time, they say, heals. And over time, Rissicat gradually but surely started getting over Abdul's sudden departure. Rissicat vowed to be strong for her two daughters no matter what. So she much pitied both of them, as according to her, their blue eyes were not their own making. It was just endowed upon them by fates, just like herself, Rissica thought. And she made a vow never to blame her two daughters again for her current predicament. Instead, she promised herself to make them both as happy as possible, and that was exactly what Rissica did. She basically made her two daughters the center of her universe. However, it wasn't easy for Rissica to cope without Abdul. She had been a full-time housewife while Abdul was the sole breadwinner for the family. But with Abdul now gone, Rissicat literally went through hell just to feed her daughters. She basically became a beggar, going from one relative to another and begging for food and money. It wasn't a rosy life for Rissicat to say the least, as every day brought its own unique challenges. But she persevered, just for the love she had for her daughters. Time flew by, and it was now almost two years after Abdul's sudden departure. Rissicat was barely managing to scrap by with her two kids. They were literally feeding from hand to mouth when luck finally smiled on Rissicat and her two daughters in a most unbelievable manner. A local journalist named Musa was desperately searching for some captivating story to sell to his news station when he stumbled upon Rissicat's story by chance. Musa was in a local cafe downing a bowl of locally brewed beer when he overheard some three drunk men discussing and laughing about the three blue-eyed witches and Abdul's disappearance. 
Three blue-eyed witches, Musa wondered aloud as he drew closer to the men. Musa then ordered more bowls of beer for the men, a gesture that won him in the men's appraisal. Then with his journalistic instincts in full swing, Musa started asking the men about the three blue-eyed witches they were just talking about. The men told Musa everything he needed to know about Risikat and her two kids. After the captivating story, Musa immediately thanked the men, paid all his bills and left the cafe. The following morning, Musa armed with his video camera and press gear immediately went in search of Risikat with the address the man at the cafe had given him. Musa found Risikat and her two daughters, Fatima and Aisha, at home and was immediately mesmerized by their unique eyes, shining like diamonds on their beautiful black skin. He then introduced himself to Risikat and pleaded with her to tell her story, while he recorded her with his camera. At first, Risikat bluntly refused Musa's request, but after much pleading, she agreed to oblige him. So Risikat, surrounded by her two daughters, told her touching story while Musa recorded. She poured out her pure heartfelt emotions into the video. Risikat painted vivid pictures of her bitter struggles. After shooting the deeply touching video, the clearly elated Musa left, but not before promising Risikat that he would get in touch with her soon. Few days later, the news station that Musa was working for broadcasted the video on air, and it immediately went viral on social media. Risikat's video simply resonated across the nation, touching many hearts. As Risikat's story unfolded, many of her country folk were deeply moved by the unfortunate challenge she and her innocent kids faced just because of their unique looks. Risikat's sympathizers grew by their thousands every single day. These sympathizers were gravely enraged, being fully aware that there still existed some misguided notion that labeled blue eyes as a curse or associated it with witchcraft in some rural regions of the country. Not only did the people touched by the video sympathize with Risikat, they decided to help her cause. Soon enough, a GoFundMe account was opened for Risikat and her children. Within a few weeks, the account had already raked in a huge amount of money and counting. But the support didn't end there. One of Risikat's wealthy sympathizers even gifted her a fully furnished three-bedroom apartment. Risikat's story also caught the attention of top politicians in the country. The wife of the governor of her home state even offered Fatima and Aisha full scholarships to tertiary educational level. The blessings just kept pouring in for Risikat and her two daughters. A popular modeling icon in the country named Tande saw the potential of Risikat and her two daughters in the modeling world, so he invited the trio to his modeling studio. Risikat and her daughters were adorned in elegant hairstyles and clothes. Then Tande took some pictures of them in different poses and circulated the images across various social media platforms. Nothing could have prepared him for the massive positive reaction the pictures got on social media. People were shocked at Risikat's transformation. She looked exceptionally stunning and elegant, just like a beauty queen. This marked the beginning of Risikat's successful modeling and influencing career. Many brands and businesses began signing her up as an ambassador. In just a few months, Risikat was a household name in her country. Above all, she was wealthy and enjoying life to the fullest with her daughters. And that was when Abdul showed up from nowhere. It happened one late morning. Rizikat was just about to drive off to her new boutique when she noticed some commotion at the gate. She hurriedly went down to the gate and lo and behold, Rizikat found her security guard holding off the shabbily dressed and unkempt looking Abdul who was trying to force his way into the compound. Rizikat was stunned to see Abdul again after almost four years but she managed to maintain her composure. Once Abdul saw her, he screamed at the security guard. Let me be, she's my wife, just ask her. The security guard on sighting his boss finally let go of Abdul, but he still stood between the duo to keep Abdul at bay and prevent him from getting to Risikat, who just stood there staring at Abdul with an indifferent expression on her beautiful face. Abdul immediately knelt down and with tears streaming down his face, he begged Risikat for forgiveness, but it was too late. Risikat wasn't even listening to him. She just ordered the security guard to open the gate for her. Then she hurried into her Toyota SUV and drove off, without even uttering a single word to Abdul, who was still kneeling there. The security guard promptly closed the gate after Risikat's departure, leaving Abdul still kneeling outside. Full of regrets for caving into his new late mom's pressures to dump Risikat and his daughters, Abdul still kneeling cried for a long time. Afterwards, he slowly stood up and left feeling broken and shattered. And if you happen to be in Risikat's shoes, would you ever accept Abdul back again? What would you do differently? Feel free to share your comments with us in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.